Oops, some revisions to the labor market data are going to affect the real estate market. We're going to talk about that today, and a record number of home buyers are canceling their contracts. Or are they? We're going to look into that data as well. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Let's get into it. If you missed what happened last week, well, the U.S. economy created 818,000 fewer jobs than it previously reported. Okay, this big news came out last week for the labor market. Um, Bureau of Labor Statistics revised down its total tally of jobs created in the year through March by 818,000. Um, that suggests the economy added an average of 170. 4,000 jobs per month during that time, rather than the 242,000 estimate. On a monthly basis, that amounts to about 68,000 fewer jobs per month. It marks the largest downward revision since 2009. So why do we care? Why do I say this is going to affect the real estate market? Well, mortgage rates are affected by what happens in markets. Mortgage rates are affected by what the Fed says. The Fed has been saying that the labor market is really the one thing that has been too tight and too strong and has not allowed them to feel like they could change the direction of their policy. They've been very restrictive. And now, come to find out, this labor market has not been as strong as they've said this whole time. So not only have they already been talking Talking about a rate cut in September. That's not new news, but this really reinforces the fact that they are going to do that. And now the question is, by how much? Now remember, the federal funds rate is not the mortgage interest rate, but mortgage interest rates are going to move based on what happens in markets and markets move based on what the Fed says. So this timing last week was pretty interesting because the Fed was at their annual meeting in Jackson Hole. I'm sure it's a wonderful time. Um, and all of this information came out. And so then on Friday, Chair Powell was able to speak. Um, and this says that he was given an opportunity to append his last major appearance in the press conference um, that followed the Fed meeting just over three weeks ago. Um, and he basically said the same thing, but more forcefully. In not so many words, Powell made it clear that the default game plan is to cut rates in the September meeting. In fact, as far as financial markets are concerned, the only uncertainty is whether the rate cut will be the minimum 25 basis points or double that amount. So for certain, we are going to see our first rate cut of the year in September, and uh, we're not sure how much that will be, but this additional data really um, allows them to consider a 50 basis point cut as well um, instead of that 25 basis point cut. So um, we'll see what happens and what additional data we get between now and then because they are still going to be following that information to make their decisions. So what happened with mortgage rates? Well, you can see here mortgage rates fall to two week lows after the Fed's friendly message. We ended last week around 6.4%, still not at the low that we saw at the beginning of August, which was 6.34%. Um, but we are still on a downward path, which is great news for home buyers. Um, so just to give a little bit of, of a recap, um, from what Powell said, he says, my confidence has grown that inflation is on a sustainable path back to 2%. Um, now remember, that has been their goal this whole time since they started increasing the federal funds rate in 2022 was to get inflation down to 2%. Um, he noted that inflation has fallen to 2.5% from the peak of 7.1% two years ago. And then the CPI has dropped from a peak of 9.1% to 2.9% last month. So we've made a lot of progress in inflation, which is what they've been wanting to see. Um, it's really been the labor market, which has seemed to be pretty stubborn. And now we know um, maybe it wasn't actually quite that stubborn. He also suggests that uh, rate cuts are all but inevitable at this point. The direction of travel is clear and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook and balance of risks. So if you're a home buyer out there and you're waiting until September's rate cut to you know, see if mortgage rates change, that's not really how this works. So all of these things that they're mentioning right now are impacting markets and impacting the mortgage rates. So we're seeing those changes now. They usually, mortgage lenders are usually pricing this in before those rate cuts actually take place. So 
be that as it may, uh, check in with a mortgage lender, see where you would be rate wise and know that it can be somewhat volatile. So what they're saying today could change tomorrow or end of the week, depending on the movement in the market. So that is the story as it relates to um, this big news with the labor market and how that will probably affect the real estate market. Um, My thoughts on that is if we do see a lot of movement in mortgage rates, of course, we're going to see a lot more movement in the housing market. We've already seen some additional movement based on the dip in rates that we saw a few weeks ago. There's been more buyer demand out there, a little bit more activity going on. It's nothing that has totally shifted the market but we are starting to see some indications in the CMI, in the contract ratio out there that we may be gaining a little bit more heat in the market. So as the Cromford report has said, I hope buyers took advantage over the last three months because they're anticipating that buyers won't have as much of an advantage going forward from here. Now, according to Redfin, house hunters are back as monthly mortgage payments post first annual decline since 2020. They're saying the US, the median US monthly mortgage payment was 2,587 during the four weeks ending August 18th, lowest level since February and down 0.1% from a year earlier. Woohoo, that's a tiny drop, but it does mark the first time in four weeks or um, in, I'm sorry, in four years, monthly payments have posted any decline at all. Um, So I've shared a lot of this before from Redfin, and usually they're looking at a decline, you know, from earlier in the year or maybe the previous year, but nothing as large as a four-year time span. So it's a pretty nice thing to see uh, this little bump in affordability. Now, I know uh, many, many people don't believe that mortgage rates are the issue and that it is prices and whatever you believe. Um, Bottom line is this kind of movement makes it a little bit more affordable for buyers. This is also saying the uptick in home tours hasn't yet translated to more sales. As I was saying, we've seen a little bit more activity in the Phoenix market, but we're not seeing any new uh, data as it relates to home sales. Um, It hasn't really hit at that point yet. Uh, Pending home sales are down 5.3% year over year, the biggest decline in nine months. And mortgage purchase applications are down 8%, but pending sales are lagging indicator and they may improve as home tours pick up. Um, And so this agent is saying over the last two weeks, I've seen momentum build. I have felt clients get more excited about the prospect of buying or selling a home. So anecdotally, we can say what we're seeing in the market, but right now we're not really seeing it in the data. So let's talk about this number of canceled contracts, because you've probably seen the headlines that there is a record number of buyers canceling contracts, and uh, it can be a very scary statistic. But um, I'm going to dig into this a little bit. And by the way, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and sharing this information with someone who might be interested in seeing this video. Um, We'd love for you to join us here every Tuesday. So a record 60,000 home buyers backed out of deals in July. Here's why. So this is talking about how cancellations were the highest in markets where builders have been especially active um, and the inventory of new homes has risen considerably. Um, So I think what they're saying from that is a lot of people are canceling their existing home sales and going to new build inventory because there are more um, incentives there. A lack of interest from buyers as well as a glut of supply in some local real estate markets has also pushed sellers to cut prices of their home listings. Um, Total number of home Homes for sale in July was up nearly 14% from the same time the year before. Another article, real estate deals in America are getting canceled at the last minute for the most insignificant reasons. Now, I will agree with that. And I've said this uh, many times. I've talked about this on my TikTok account, but um, buyers are very, very picky right now. And I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but they are very, very picky. The smallest things, they either won't write an offer um, or they won't counter an offer because of the smallest things, or they will cancel based on an inspection item that maybe isn't really that significant. Um, But it's because they have more choices out there, number one. And number two, 
it's expensive. So they're uh, definitely saying like, hey, if I'm paying this much, I want it to be exactly what I want. Um, a recent Redfin report reveals around 56,000 home purchases fell through last June or nearly 15% of homes that went under contract, uh, marking the highest percentage of any June on record. Now, if we look back at this Market Watch article, um, they are talking about July, same data from Redfin. They're saying it's about 16% of the homes um, that went under contract that month. They're saying it's the highest share of cancellations for any July on record, going back to 2017 when the company began tracking that data. This is why I think this is a little bit misleading because if we're only going to look at cancellations going back to 2017 and we're going to call that out as a record, I don't think that's really fair, okay? Because we all know the market has not been any sort of normal since 2020. And in fact, 2018 and 2019 were also fairly strong sellers markets. So going back to 2017, yeah, I'm not surprised that we have a record number of cancellations because we're, we haven't seen that type of market in a while. Um, plus we have more supply now than we did the last few years. So my point being, take this with a grain of salt. I don't think this is any sort of indicator of weakening in the market. And I've seen a lot of other articles and um, you know creators out there talking about this stat as something being really scary. Um, it's not, 2017 is not that long ago, and I just don't think that's valid to consider this like an all-time record. So that's my piece on that. We're gonna look at what's going on in Phoenix, however, and unfortunately, we don't have like a canceled contracts status that I can access per se, but what I was able to find is accepted contracts versus back on market in a particular time period. And so I went back to uh, to June trying to compare apples to apples um, with the Redfin data, took the average through June of the number of homes that went back on market versus the number of homes that we had accepted contracts on. And we're looking at about 20 to 21% cancellation rate if that data is, is accurate. So again, this is not exactly perfect. This is the best I can do, but just so to give, to give some sort of visibility into what's going on in Phoenix, we're seeing a higher percentage um, here in Phoenix of that cancellations um, than they are stating in that Redfin article for the broader US. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the Cromford Report said, I hope buyers took advantage for the last three months because we are starting to see some heating up in the market. So let's get into what they're talking about. First, they're talking about the CMI. And before anyone says anything, I can't control these little um, gauges here. This is just a screenshot from the Cromford Report. I don't know how they set it up. For all I know, they copy and paste a little image in here and they just haven't changed where the dial's pointing. So don't get too concerned about that. We're just looking at the numbers here, okay? So the demand index is 73.3. Knowing that 100 is considered a, a balanced normal market, well, not balanced, but a normal market, um, we're sitting at about 27% below normal for demand and 27% below normal for supply as well, which is why we are balanced. That's why I corrected myself. We're not, uh, 100 doesn't mean balanced. What means balanced is when supply and demand are are at the same number. We can be in a balanced market with any of those factors. Um, what does change is the number of transactions that we are seeing. So when demand is lower, the number of transactions will be lower. Even if we are still in a balanced market, everything is just moving slower. Overall, our market index is at 99.5, so very, very close to 100 there, which is, again, considered a balanced market. Anything between 90 to 110 on that overall index is considered balance. Now, when we look at every city individually um, throughout the Phoenix metro area, they're looking at the 17 largest cities where they're able to get data on. Um, we're seeing that Fountain Hills is leading the pack at 176. Um, they've had an 8% increase in their CMI month over month. Chandler is still up there at 151, Avondale at 145. So we have a number of these cities in seller's markets, everything from Glendale to Fountain Hills. Um, and then we have Peoria and Cave Creek, 
Tempe, all in balanced markets, and Goodyear Surprise, Queen Creek, Maricopa, and Buckeye, all in buyer's markets. Now, uh, the Cromford Report is saying we're seeing more positive signs from a seller's perspective. There's nine cities showing an increase in their CMI over the past month, which is up from eight that we saw last week. We have eight cities showing a decrease. Um, It is a small majority going up, and this is the first time we've seen this situation since May 9th. So they're saying the average change in the CMI over the past month is 0.7%. That's the first positive reading we've seen since May uh, uh, May 23rd. And last week we saw a negative 0.1% change. So now we're in positive territory. We'll see if that continues. They said the market is starting to improve for sellers overall, and I hope buyers took good advantage of their opportunity to negotiate harder over the last three months. So they're anticipating this trend to continue and starting to see sellers have a little bit more advantage in the market. Um, now let's look at the uh, the contract ratio, which I've been showing lately, and this is a really cool heat map. I love it because it shows by zip code. And what I noticed immediately when I looked at this this week is that we're seeing a little bit more uh, zip codes that are warmer. Um, We've got Chandler still hanging in the mix, and we've added a couple others. So if I just go back um, in time to last week, and let's take a look at what that looked like. This is showing August 10th right now, so that is a little bit too far back. But if we go back to August 17th, you can see we had fewer um, warm and hot zip codes. And then if we go to this week, you'll see the change where we add a few more warmer areas. Um, So we are seeing that kind of heat up in the contract ratio. Remember, I mentioned last week, we're going to see a change in this before we see it in the CMI, because this is um, just really uh, taking into consideration the current changes. So the number of listings that are active on the market compared to the ones that are going under contract and tracking that daily. Um, The other, the, the CMI is an algorithm. It's a little bit smoother and it's adjusted for seasonality. So as a seller, if you've been on the fence and you're like, well, it's just been so slow and so tough and everything I hear is that it's a buyer's market. Well, first of all, it hasn't been a buyer's market. It's just been a slower balanced market. But now may be your time. According to the Cromford Report, we may start to see a change, a shift where sellers start to have the upper hand. And part of that is based on the demand. And so as we see mortgage rates come down, we likely start to see more demand. And I know when I share this information um, for your city, you get the overall CMI, but you're not knowing what's going on with demand and supply separately. I do have that information by city, however. Um, So if there is a city that you're in, you're considering selling, you wanna know what the demand looks like in that city, check the description below. I have a link to request that information and I will get that to you. Thank you all for joining me today for this market update. I will be back next Tuesday with another market update.